In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Sheets to enter your data and manipulate some of that data for your inclined air track lab. In this lab, you're supposed to describe the motion of one glider on an inclined air track and then describe the motion of a second glider on a different incline and then compare the two motions. So basically, we are making our graphs of position time and velocity time, and then we've got the added extra velocity versus position graph. So we'll start, uh, we've got our columns in here. You can basically just click in any of these cells. We've got our clock reading. That was in frames. Uh, if you want, we can click over here on the one to highlight the whole row. And we can go to format menu and turn the text wrapping on. So I'm gonna turn on the wrap so that you don't have these gigantically long, um, gigantically wide columns in your spreadsheet. So we've got the clock reading in frames. And we've got the position in TV centimeters. Remember we did this on a video with some tape and some markers and you measured the position on the video screen, but we wanna know what the position is in real life. So clock reading in frames, zero. And then we went every six frames. You can type it like this if you want to, but it's easier if you let the computer know what the pattern is by highlighting a couple of the frames. And then if you drag down like this, It'll drag down to as many frames as you need. I'm not sure how many frames we need. Position in TV centimeters. Um, I'm just gonna paste this in here. You would type it in, but I'm gonna paste it in because it's a lot faster, sorry. And we need a little bit longer. We need this to take a little bit longer time. There we go. Okay, so now our raw data is in. Now we need to make our calculated columns. It's a little bit different from using Logger Pro but it is way more powerful than using Logger Pro. So there's some neat stuff you can do with a spreadsheet. It's really kind of a tool for, it's a tool for life. So we wanna make the clock reading, not in frames, but in seconds. Okay. To do that, we know that 30 frames is equal to one second. So we type in an equals to let it know that we're gonna calculate this from something else. I'm gonna click on this cell over here and divide that by 30. And it gets zero. And oh, look at this. It suggests an autofill. So I want to autofill this all the way down. Click. And it fills that formula all the way down. Okay. If you're using uh, Microsoft Excel or something that doesn't give you that autofill, if you drag this little thing, if you click on this little dot down here and drag down, it would do the same thing. So now we've got our clock reading. You can kind of check that by seeing that 30 here is one over here. If it bothers you that that one doesn't have any uh, decimal points in it, I think that you can kind of, there you go. If we, highlight the, if we highlight the whole column by clicking up here on the C, we can change the number of decimal points in our data so it all looks kind of uniform. I like it that way. Now we're gonna change our position from TV centimeters to, you know, for real centimeters. And this is why where you measured the, the, there was a meter stick on the air track. So you can measure 100 real centimeters is some number. And most of you guys got something around, like I don't know, somewhere between 12 and 15 centimeters. So we'll just use some random number between 12 and 15 centimeters. Your number will depend on what the length of the meter stick was on the video that you, that you used. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna type in an equal sign to tell it that I'm calculating some I'm calculating this value from other cells in the spreadsheet. I'm gonna click on this cell, because I wanna take that cell, and then the conversion factor that I use, I'm gonna multiply by 100 real centimeters for every, I don't know, what if we got 15.1 last period? 15.1 TV centimeters. And then we'll autofill. Okay. And so we can see our position going up and then back down and again, it's insane to have that many decimal places. So probably something like this is nice, um, but really something like this is just fine. Now we need to uh, think about the graphs that we can make. We've got enough, um, we've got enough Calculated columns here to make a position versus uh, clock reading graph or position versus time graph. 
one of the things we did was a time squared graph, right? In uh, seconds squared. And that's going to equal this number squared. And again, a lot of fill down. Two decimal places is probably fine. And you can make a position versus time squared graph now. Uh, next, we want to make a velocity versus time graph. For that, we need to make a column for displacement, a column for time interval, a column for average velocity, and a column for um, middle time. So displacement first. Well, I can't ca calculate displacement for the first position because there's not another position before that, right? So we're going to start here on the second row of our data equals the delta of these two. So it's just this column, uh, this cell minus this cell. And then we'll fill that down. And then we need a time interval. seconds. And again, it's going to be this clock reading, oops, equals this clock reading minus this clock reading. That gives me a point two. Oh, wow, you didn't offer to autofill? Thanks a lot. Double click. Yeah, if I double click on that dot, it'll fill down. If it doesn't do that for you, you can drag that all the way down to here. And then we can do our velocity, centimeters per second. Remember that's just displacement divided by time interval. Oh look, now you suggest the autofill, okay. But I'm going to suggest you don't put six decimal places after. And now we need middle time. Seconds. And remember, we had to do this weird thing on Logger Pro where it was like time minus half of the change in time, but really the middle time is just the average of the time. So if you want, you can put equals average of these two clock readings. Or you could put equals parentheses this clock reading plus this clock reading and the parentheses divided by two. It's up to you, either way you want to do it. And we'll fill that down. Okay. And lastly, we need um, to make a velocity versus position graph. Well, just like the time, right? So remember, this velocity doesn't go with this clock reading and it doesn't go with this clock reading, it really goes with the middle of those two clock readings. Likewise, this velocity doesn't go with this position, and it doesn't go with this position, it goes with somewhere in the middle of those two positions. Now, we're kind of fudging a little bit because it's not actually right in the middle of those two positions, right? But we're gonna pretend it's in the middle of those two positions. So we're gonna use that middle spot in the positions even though it's not really. But the middle is closer to the right answer than 152 or 0. So we'll call this middle position. Centimeters. We'll say that that equals. Uh, again, this position plus this position divided by two. A lot of fill. And again, we probably don't need all those decimal places. Maybe 
one. And now we've got all of the uh, columns that we need to make our graph graphs for the inclined air track lab, except we only have one data set. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy all this. Okay. I'm going to copy all this and I'm going to scooch over a little bit and I'm going to paste. Wow, that didn't work at all. I'm going to <laughs> should have seen copy all of this and then I'm going to scooch over here and paste. There we go. And now the only thing I need to do now is erase this data and type in my new position data and then everything should fill itself out. Okay. And then what I can do to make it keep myself organized, I can do something like insert a row and say that this is my, I don't know, high incline not really sure which one it was. High incline data, and this is my low incline data. So that when I turn it in, I know which data table goes with which incline. Make sense? And that's getting your data into sheets.